Hey guys, it's Jordan with TYT and TYT Politics. Hope everyone's having a good day. I am still in Portland, uh, roaming around the Pacific Northwest and enjoying my time while also uh, still doing some reporting. I was at Mount Hood yesterday, which is gorgeous, uh, right here in Oregon. So I uh, had a nice time. And if any of you Pacific Northwesterners are around this week, I'm here until Friday. So uh, get at me on Twitter or Facebook. So uh, today I wanted to chat a little bit about uh, Bernie Sanders, who obviously brought a lot of you uh, into the political arena or uh, kind of brought a lot of you back after years of hibernation. Uh, Bernie obviously uh, has endorsed Hillary Clinton uh, a while ago and spoke at the DNC on her behalf, ruffling the feathers of a lot of his uh, supporters. Uh, give me one second. I just want to make sure. Uh, the audio is good. Yeah, so Bernie obviously uh, has been doing some things that his supporters don't love. Uh, but I am also uh, looking at what he's going to be doing going forward, which frankly to me seems like he's being kind of used by the DNC. Uh, I'm going to be reading from an article here on Politico about uh, the next steps for Bernie. So bear with me for a minute. Uh, the headline is, In Private Call, DNC Flexes Unity with Clinton Camp and Sanders Team. Uh, for those of you that don't know, after W. Wasserman Schultz resigned, Donna Brazil, who's a longtime uh, DNC official, operative, uh, national delegate, um, worked on Gore's campaign in 2000, a real Democratic Party lifer, uh, CNN commentator. She is the interim chair of the DNC. So... The man who led Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign vowed Monday night during a conference call with DNC officials that Sanders was committed to traveling the country to campaign for Hillary Clinton and down-ballot Democratic candidates. Quote, this is not going to be an easy task, and it's going to take us all rowing together, Jeff Weaver said. Jeff Weaver was Bernie's campaign manager. So, the private conference call, which included top Democratic National Committee officials, including Chief of Staff, Brandon Davis, and, start and state party leaders was led by DNC interim chair Donna Brazil, who had met with Weaver and Sanders' ca top campaign advisor Mark Longbow earlier in the day. According to DNC officials, the three discussed Stan Sanders' schedule as well as voter mobilization among former Sanders supporters. So what you see here, uh, they are <laughs> Sanders' campaign manager, uh, other advisors are actively talking to the DNC, working with the DNC on how he's going to help Democratic candidates down ballot. Uh, the call focused on a 50-state strategy for the November election to be implemented soon by members of Clinton's campaign and Sanders' former presidential team. The close interactions between the interim DNC chairwoman and the Sanders campaign is, a stark, is, is, is in stark contrast to earlier in the presidential cycle, when the campaign criticized now former DNC chairwoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz as unfairly partial to Clinton. Jeff Weaver quoted as saying, I know that sometimes in primaries there could be sharp elbows, and I hope I haven't bumped into too many of you, Weaver said on the call. But as we go forward into the general election, I'm very happy to be working with members of the Clinton team and trying to get the secretary elected. Oy, oy, oy. Weaver noted that Sanders' organization, Our Revolution, has raised nearly $300,000 for, for liberal Democratic down-ballot and congressional candidates. Brazil thanked Weaver and the Sanders team for their leadership and organizing ability for up and down the ballot. The team has been, quote, tremendous in reaching out, helping out, filling gaps, she said. Throughout the call, Brazil made a point of stressing her plans to strengthen Democratic state parties and down-ballot Democratic candidates. She, she said she'd she'd begun fundraising for the DNC to help implement the 50-state strategy and that after Labor, Labor Day, there would be another update with the, with the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee. Uh, a little bit more. Marlon Marshall, the Clinton campaign's director of states and Brazil, highlighted red states around the country where they thought Democrats could make immediate inroads, including Georgia and North Carolina. I could read more uh, if you want to go. It's on Politico. The headline is In Private Call, DNC Flexes Unity with Clinton Camp and Sanders Team. So the reason I'm reading this article is because I think that Bernie Sanders, who obviously has been um, in Congress for 
a long time. He was a congressman. He was a senator. He was a mayor for that. Obviously, he doesn't need my political advice uh, or, you know, many people's advice. But I think that he is kind of getting caught up in his movement and getting caught up in the fact that for the first time, the DNC is treating him with the respect he deserves for what he accomplished. Uh, For the first time, the DNC is treating him uh, like he is part of the future of the Democratic Party and his his movement. Uh, and the young people and, and older people behind him are, uh, you know, part of that movement. It's a very stark, stark contrast from Debbie Wasserman Schultz and the DNC before, who, frankly, their main interest was getting Bernie out of the way and keeping things as is. Uh, I think what uh, Senator Sanders might be missing is the fact that the, the Democratic Party and political parties in general, there, there's not a lot of thought often put in in the long term. Okay, it's how do I win the next election? It's how do I, uh, you know, refill the coffers financially? It's how do I uh, maintain maintain my power? Uh, A lot of politics is a game of survival. Uh, And it's, you know, there are some people who do focus on the long term. But uh, overall, it is uh, it is a game of now. It is a game of the next few months. So Donna Brazil, uh, who's obviously is better than Debbie Wasserman Schultz, she could be saying all she wants about, uh, you know, 50 state strategy, uh, bringing in new voters. You know, we want you going around the country uh, campaigning for liberal Democrats. But at the end of the day, they're trying to get Bernie Sanders to get his young people and get millennials on board with the Democratic Party. That's what they want from him. They're not going around. They're not asking Bernie Sanders to go around, go around the country because they think he's just a gorgeous dude and love hearing him speak. They are using him for a political purpose. And I think Bernie's smart enough to know that. Now, Bernie might be playing a little chess game, you know, establish good relationships now with the DNC, with the Democratic Party, so that when he when he goes back uh, to being a senator, you know, there are there are he has made some inroads. He has relations with the DNC, um, establishment Democrats. And obviously he has a more powerful position uh, you know, with a very successful presidential run, as well as a huge army behind him. Uh, the problem with that, again, is Hillary Clinton, Donna Brazil, the Democratic Party, this, they are transa- transactional politicians. They're not focused on the long term. They are focused in getting her elected, getting the Senate back for Democrats, and possibly something that was not thought of before, getting the House back for Democrats. If they have a if they have a Democratic president, a Democratic senator, a Democrat, a Democratic Senate, a Democratic House, you think they care what Bernie Sanders says or his movement behind him? I'm just being real. Uh, Matt Taibbi of Rolling Stones wrote a great piece a few weeks ago saying the Democrats are going to learn all this, all the wrong lessons from Hillary Clinton's primary victory over over Bernie Sanders. They basically think, oh, we squashed that pesty little, you know, bug uh, or fly. Uh, that Ber- was Bernie Sanders and those those kids, you know, and now we could go back to business as usual. So the proof's in the pudding. It's, it remains to be seen which candidates Bernie Sanders is going around the country and speaking for. Um, it's, you know, I'd like to see if he's going to be going down to Florida this coming week or soon uh, to speak for Tim Canova, who is in a you know tough primary against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. That would be the most obvious place Ber- a, a Bernie's voice would be needed. I'd like to see if he's going to speak for Zephyr Teachout in New York. Uh, there's a lot of different progressive candidates all over the country that uh, could really use Bernie's voice and millennials and young people and older people that Bernie has inspired to, to have that Bernie uh, voice at a rally, at an event, at fundraisers, whatever. But for him, for Bernie to be doing all this for the Democratic Party uh, seems a little bit of a poor negotiation on his part. Also seems a little naive on his part that he thinks they are acting in good faith, that, that he thinks that once, once he goes and speaks for them, speaks for their candidates, helps fundraise for their candidates, they're going to implement a 50-state strategy, that they are going to be carrying the torch and following through uh, once Hillary Clinton becomes president on overturning Citizens United, on stopping fracking, on, you know, on, all, on $15 minimum wage. I mean, actions speak louder than words. Senator Sanders, you need to look at the politicians that you're going around the country on their behalf and look at their voting record and look at their record in political life. 
Look at how consistent they've been. I mean, he's not a, he's not a stupid man. He, you know, he knows what he's doing. But, you know, he went above and beyond endorsing Hillary Clinton, which a lot of people didn't agree with. Um, and, you know, it's one thing if you go around the country, you want to campaign for her uh, here and there. But when you're going to go actively try to help the entire Democratic Party and the entire Democratic National Committee, it's kind of flying in the face with your message that these people, uh, this party has lost its way. This party is, is no longer representing working people. That hasn't suddenly changed because Debbie Wasserman Schultz is no longer the chairwoman. And I think Bernie knows that. So uh, Bernie going around the country, uh, you know, campaigning for Democrats down ballot. I'm not sure uh, that I think that's a little that's a step too far. Again, he could prove me wrong if he's campaigning for very, very progressive candidates. But my hunch tells me Donna Brazil and the Democratic establishment want Bernie going around campaigning for more stalwarts of the establishment like Hillary Clinton. Um, those are the people they need to get elected to take back the Senate, take back the House. And those are also the same people that will probably, once they're in Congress and Senate, not be joining Bernie Sanders on the front line against money and politics. So he really needs to think long and hard about how involved he wants to be helping down ballot Democrats and the Democratic Party, frankly. I mean, just think about it personally. Yeah, you, you could forgive, but you don't forget. And I mean, Bernie Sanders was sandbagged by the Democratic National Committee and the Democratic Party. It's not just the WikiLeaks and all those things that came out. Uh, it's clear that just there was a constant opposition to him from lawmakers going on cable news, from the superdelegates coming out before he even announced for Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders was not given a fair shake from the beginning of this process. So to then go around, uh, you, you know, it's great, you're a bigger person, but to then go around and campaign for a lot of the same people you know, who gave lip service, oh, you know, we really appreciate that he's brought this issue to light, this issue of money and politics. That, it's not an issue, it's the issue. Um, and that's why his movement was sprung, because he's the first politician in a long time that has recognized that. So that's the deal. We'll see who he's campaigning for. We'll see how actively he's campaigning for these people. And we'll see. Maybe Bernie will prove me wrong. But uh, that's my thoughts on the Bernie uh, fundraising and Bernie, uh, you know, going around the country for the Democratic Party. I think it's a bad move overall, but we'll see who he's campaigning for, how much and what the tone is. Uh, on another note, if you haven't watched me yesterday, I hope you'll uh, check out the channel today uh, for, to watch our lead report. It's part one of uh, a multi-video series we're doing on the lead crisis in Indiana. It's in East Chicago, Indiana. Uh, it's really, uh, it possibly could make Flint look uh, less severe. This has been going on for decades where essentially the city, the EPA, built, uh, you know, built uh, low-income housing on top of lead and other contaminants uh, and then pretty much ignored uh, rising lead levels to the point now where they're basically kicking African-American low-income black people off out of their uh, low-income housing complexes, telling them they got to go elsewhere because it's inhabitable. So who knows how, how many people have been sick uh, for how long, because a lot of people in, 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 in and around the years have moved off these properties but, and might have been sick but had no idea about the lead because it was never told to them until this year. So that's up on the channel. I think it's called uh, you know, Indiana Lead Contamination, Decades in the Making. And we're really trying to get this to go national. Other parts of the video series will be coming out this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more this week.